previously on Coach Greg. At least for the first part of this video, we're gonna have Greg critiquing the way I train. So we just walked through that kind of static hold stretch. Training 37 years, I've never seen anyone train this way. Push so hard, I farted harder than last time. <laughs> All right, so we just found this free squat machine. I've never done one of these before. I've used like the reverse hack, but I've seen these before. It's like a free motion squat, so you're not hindered by like the hack squat. We'll try it out, start light, and then work our way up. It's good, but we gotta go heavier. I'm a bit more comfortable with that than like another one. Press. So I'm gonna use that little pad to try to get a little two inches deeper because I keep bottoming it out on the safety pad and I really like that. I like that tension at the bottom of my rep. I don't want to feel it hit this little rubber stopper because then it takes the tension off of my, and I don't like that whole like deload reload. Where I'm like deloading my spine and then reloading it. I like constant tension so I can control the weight and I feel like there's like that spinal decompression at the bottom and then I have to basically reload it from a bottom position. I just don't really like that feeling. I basically held it like yeah. a couple millimeters over the bottom. Now, would you recommend going as deep as you can below parallel, or do you think you should stop at parallel, or what should you be Depends going Depends on your for? hip mobility. Like, my hip mobility is tremendous. Yeah. I want to get as much quad knee flexion as possible, quad stretch, so I'm going to go as deep as I can comfortably. Like, this doesn't tax my lower back or anything else. Like, I feel great in it. So, at the point where you feel like, oh, my lower back feels pain or my hips feel pain, then you're probably at a place you need to work on your mobility before going to that depth. Yeah. And it's not going to be conducive to you. So good, dude. How long have you been training this way versus the typical bodybuilder way? And did you kind of slowly get into it or did, did the light bulb moment hit and say, I want to do like one, two, three minute sets, time under tension and not train heavy anymore? Like. Was it an injury or what really set the fire to do this? Honestly, it was the results I started to see. I always train somewhat like this, but I mixed it a lot more with like the heavier strength stuff. Probably the last two to three years, since my body's absolutely exploded, I switched over completely to this because I was like, oh my God, why would I do anything else? I'm like putting on pounds of tissue. The other really good thing about this training style burns a shit ton of calories, especially when I'm trying to achieve a deficit. I don't have to do as much cardio because I'm like, my heart rate when I track this, I'll usually be in zone cardio in my leg training for probably 70 to 100 minutes. Yeah. Like that's, we're talking. When you're doing a hard set for three minutes, it's basically doing cardio the whole time. So usually by the time I get back to my next set, my heart rate's barely getting back under 120. Yeah. When I start getting my second or third rep, back over 135. And for mine, it's the opposite. I get barely over 120 and immediately down again. Yep. So I'm barely getting any calorie burns because I'm resting so long. Yep. My set's still longer than most people, like 40 seconds, but it's still not gonna burn that many calories. Yep. It's way harder. Nice. Way to kick the glutes back. One more. Yep, I'm right here. Come on, harder than last time. Yeah, baby, I got you, I got you. That's it for the legs. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so, there's so much burn, though. So, I don't ever do sets that hard, because it's not, the, the pause is making it killer. All right, up to four plates here. It's actually over four plates. This one I was at 55. Honestly, I don't track weight, I go for feel. If this machine had felt really heavy for me, at let's say three plates, I would have left it there. I wouldn't have felt like, oh, I need to go to four plates. I'm just doing it because I'm just feeling it out. I feel like it was pretty comfortable modulating up the weight, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> and so you're training legs twice a week. Yeah. And are you doing the same workouts, like same rep range, or is it a different focus? Like I'm gonna do more focus on hamstrings, and the next day, more of the quads? Like what, do you, what is your theory on that one? Today is more quad focus, Saturdays are more. <laughs> posterior focus, more hamstring. But that being said, hamstrings are such a point of focus for me that I'll touch ISO hamstrings, even on my quad days. So seated hamstring curls, GHDs, things like that, because they're such a point of emphasis for me. But my compounds are mostly quad focus on Tuesdays. And then Saturdays, my compounds are even a little bit more hamstring focus, like deficit RDLs, maybe glute bridges, things like that. Now, a lot of guys have like a heavy day and a light day. Do you have a day where you do like a shorter time under tension, like a minute? Or is it always like, these are like one and a half to three minute sets? It's all just brutality for me on legs. All, all death. Always death. Death by legs. Now, do you ever do squats? Like I do regular Smith. barbell or just a Smith? Just Smith. All right, we're doing quad extensions. in the navel, trying to get a nice stretch behind, pushing up and squeezing at the top. Always pulling yourself down to the seat is an important cue to try not to get lifted off and get as much, obviously, impetus in the quads. You have the pads on the calves preventing pain, or is uh, that... These are knee sleeves. Oh, okay, so I usually there. have them just in case. I used to have bad knee pain before I started training like this. Yeah. So it's kind of become second nature to just have them. I wear them because... So some days you'll put them up? Very rarely, probably once a month. Your quad leanness. <clears throat> You hold like almost know your body, know your body fat in your legs. And the funny thing is, when I was younger, my legs were my fattest body part by far. I get on stage, upper body shredded usually, legs, holding so much fat. It usually oh. changed. Changes over time. Nice. Oh, that's it. Oh yeah. I couldn't do a bunch of sets like that though. I'm like, yeah. okay, you can do one set. So I just put the pad there just to get a little more stretch underneath. I'm surprised you're able to do that bike race, do all these sets while traveling. Because when you travel, most guys, they kind of train. I've trained a lot of people you know, during traveling. Most people just kind of get through something. They might do half their workout, but you're going nuts. Honestly, I treat every single workout as like my last. It's just an opportunity for me to get better. So mm. whether I'm on the road, I'm home, I'm tired, had a great night's sleep, not so good night's sleep. I go in and train within reason. Like if babies are up all night, I didn't sleep. I might pull back on the volume just a little bit. Yeah. Or listen to my body and see how I'm feeling. I'm not gonna be the person that takes three times the stim just to like feel alive. Like when I came here, I took time to recover. It's about two hours after the race. I felt good and I literally walked in. I was like, all right, I'm excited to be here. This is good. Mm -hmm. Got through those first few sets. I was like, all right, now I'm in it. And now it's just like, I'm like a freight train. It's hard to slow me down once I get momentum. What I tell people is if you don't want to go to the gym, you don't in the mood, you're not feeling it, go anyway, do your warm up, start. And if you still don't feel that way, then you need a deload day, then just yeah. go through the motions. But you don't know how you're gonna feel till you get there. Sometimes you feel like you're gonna have a bad day and you show up and you warm up and you're like, wow, I actually feel good. Yeah. So rather than just give up, at least go in and try, then you know you put you put your heart into it and then you gave it your all. And I'm really serious about my rest days too. I don't I don't feel like I overtrain. I take two full rest days. Per week or in a row? Uh, I actually take them on Wednesdays and Sundays. Okay, yeah, split them. So I yeah. split them. I literally take them the day after my leg day. Yeah. So I train legs on Tuesdays and Saturdays, rest on Wednesday and Sunday. So I think that helps me a lot because a lot of guys I, I know train six days a week, do an AM, PM session. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> you don't need all that. After a while, you're just overtraining, you're doing junk volume, going it's like, through the motions. But some guys, all, and they're very high level guys, and I'm sure, I'm, I don't know if he'll watch this video, but even like a Jared Feather from RP Strength, Mike Sertel's business partner, he'll tell me he'll do AM, PM sessions, but his volume is so low. In his sessions, it'll be like three exercises for three sets each. I'm like, just, because they'll just be like, I'm gonna it. come back tonight and do triceps. You just did like, eight sets just do your triceps right now before you have to like go home shower gets get like revamped up to come back to the gym you already have blood flow the body's warm why would you do an am and pm session when the yeah, volume for each twice 
cool down twice. Yeah, and it's not like his, to drive this it's not like his AM PM session was like one, his AM session was as much as somebody's normal workout. I was like almost half the workout. Yeah. Then you come back for a PM. I'm like, I don't think that maybe 1% difference of like having time to rest and get more food in. I think it's going to be superseded by the fact that you lose your pump, lose that blood flow, and then have to mentally lock back in for a whole second workout. It gives you the opportunity to have one of the two be a bad workout. Whereas if you get there and you're having a great workout, ride that wave. Even the science, well, as far as cardio and training, the science will say, separate your cardio and your workout. But yeah, for I me, think... I need it together. Cause I don't have, I'm not going to the gym twice. So if I go do my cardio and my weights, I'm doing it all together. Exactly. And Even for, though for you that works. Says it's better. But it's maybe 5%. It's not better for me. Yeah. And if it, if it means you're not going to do one or the other. Yeah then it's better if that you do it like that. Yeah. So I think there's just always people outside the out of it sometimes. Whereas for me, it's like, I'm sure a lot of people watch my training and they're like junk volume, stupid training. You don't need that much time under tension. Just lift heavy and go home. It's like, sure, everybody has their whole methodology. I'm not saying I'm the only, it's the only way to, it's not the only way to build muscle, but everybody's like, oh, well look at Ronnie Coleman. I'm like, oh, so Ronnie Coleman, like mm. literally can't walk He now. can't walk, he's not a good example. Not yeah. a good example. Even Jay, to a certain extent, he was strong as hell, but he used a lot of time under tension. He did a lot of volume. And a lot of volume. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So I'm gonna do a couple rest pauses now. So just keep it locked in. And when you keep your, when my, my quads like are like eight out of 10 burning right now, and when you keep them in this bent position, like you're not letting that burn release. Like when you saw us doing the racing today, I kept straightening my legs out because it helped me release some of that lactic acid buildup in my quads. So when I sit here and do rest pauses, so I don't have any tension, but I'm not letting my quads out of that bent position, which is still holding that blood flow there. It's a lot of, it's, it's a principle a lot of coaches, if you see like Honey Rambod, who uses it a lot. It's a really effective way to keep that blood flow in there. So I'm gonna just give it like 30 seconds, then dig through some more reps. Basically getting more effective reps. The first five sets of an exercise of 10 is not really doing much. The last five are, and you're resting here, going again and again. It's like adding in two extra sets. So it's the other way to progressive overload. You don't have to just go heavier. I'm dropping down the rest time. I'm holding tension with these rest pauses. So there's different ways to increase the intensity in your workouts without having to go heavier. I literally can't go heavier. The stack is on there. So I have to find other ways to get creative, to push myself. Mm. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Death. Death by aquatic senses. You can see just how much blood flow I'm getting. Yeah, the shorts are hardly fit now. I mean, these are, just to put it in perspective, these are 2XL basketball shorts. I don't think they're supposed to fit like this, but they do. Just because I'm not going as heavy as possible doesn't mean I'm not training hard. It just means I'm training with more intentionality and I have to mentally lock in maybe a little bit more than that mentally locking where you're just like, walking up to a bar with six plates on it. Sure, that's hard too. It's just a different type of hard. All right, we're gonna move on to hamstring curls because I hamstrings are garbage. I'm gonna have Coach Greg actually push that pad down for me so I can lock this in super All deep. Right, so what do we do? So you basically- two, is that good? So yeah, it's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is have you push that down, like with your body weight. So push that down and I'm gonna that lock, lock it in as deep as I can. That's perfect. Yep. So now when it comes up, you see, I still have tension in that like stretch position because I don't want it to top out before I get then that stretch. So I'm actually gonna lean these forward and tuck underneath and get as good of a squeeze as I can, slow on that eccentric. And by leaning forward like this, I can get even more stretch at the top of the rep because I'm if I'm lean forward, I'm like almost bent over. So it's almost like I'm trying to touch my toes. And the more bent forward I am, the more stretch I'm gonna get because it's almost like emulatory of that kind of like touch your toes stretch. And I'm gonna dig underneath. And I like having this pad nice and tucked down. I don't have to worry about sliding or letting any of that impetus go on my lower back. And I don't know if I'm really strong or these machines are just light, but I'm almost topping this thing out and it feels very light.
perfect. And then move out a little more. Further, more. Beautiful. it a little bit. Okay, drop it all the way. Take your foot out, there you go. Tom Platts. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice a style. nice compliment. We're gonna finish out with some calves. Coach Greg was nice enough to help me out with those banded sets. I'm getting to that point where the fatigue's kind of starting to set in, so I don't want to do maybe one more compound because it's just probably a lot of the major turns, but I really have to take calves. So I'm gonna hit this. I've never hit this particular one, but I kind of like these variants usually. Do you like training calves? I do it a lot. I don't like it, but I fucking hate it. I do it. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably my least favorite body part to train. So you can see we're getting really big stretches at the back of our rep. You can use these principles for seated calf raises, leg press calf raises, standing calf raises. Big stretch at the back of the rep, holding that stretch, driving out, holding that peak contraction, really creating that mind muscle connection with your calves. That's going to do so much more for you than doing super heavy weight for low reps. Your calves can handle a lot more volume. You walk every day. You use them so frequently so they can handle a lot more volume and actually a lot more frequency so if you are somebody that has struggles with smaller calves hit them more frequently with more volume with really good time under tension and it's going to help you grow them because they recover a lot faster than let's say your chest which you don't use on a daily basis that is it guys for today's leg workout i am over the moon i was able to get in here after the bike race I'm not gonna lie, I felt kind of like yakking after that. Laid down for a little bit, did not eat anything else. Just drank a shit ton of water, felt so much better. And then literally like, as we were walking in, I had a great conversation with Greg in the car. Started walking in, saw the gym, and I was like, oh, this is my type of gym. Felt so much better. It was so fun to see, for uh, Greg to see how I train legs. Cause I think it's like kind of like the epitome of my training style. We trained harder than last time for sure. Greg, thank you for the push. If you're not subscribed to Greg's channel, he has so much amazing content. He is such a breath of knowledge. He's been in space for so long. So go and subscribe to his channel.